Hi everybody, this is Twin Dad, and today I'd like to show you a little feature I've been working on for the Java Model Railroad Interface software program, Jimry, what I like to call the Virtual Sound Decoder. And what this is is just like the hardware sound decoders that you can install on in your locomotives. Uh, this does the same job responding to your throttle inputs and playing sounds for you, but it runs on your computer and uses your computer's sound system. Uh, that way you get uh, good quality sound with uh, all of that bass that's needed for a good locomotive sound without uh, the uh, expense of putting sound decoders in your locomotives and for those of you in the smaller scales uh, without the problems associated with tiny little speakers. So there's two pieces. One is the uh, VSD file which is actually just a little zip archive. This contains the actual sound clip files plus a, uh, a file full of instructions that say what all of the sounds are, how to use them, which buttons to respond to, and so on. So here's my file here, the cmdnw2.zip. Uh, in the end these will be called .vsd, but I wanted to be able to just click on it and open it up and show you the contents. Inside of here, there's a configuration file, config.xml. There will also be license information, descriptive information uh, about what the contents of the file are, and uh, then there's the sounds directory, which has all of the all of the sounds. The actual structure here is freeform. Uh, the the person who creates the VSD file can set this up any way they like, uh, as long as it contains this configuration file here. Now, inside the config file. Uh, I won't go into detail here, but this is a standard XML file. It can be edited with any XML editor or text editor. Uh, and this describes all of the different kinds of sounds you have, your bells, your horns, your engine noises, your couplers, air brakes, uh, and so on. Uh, and also describes the things that trigger those sounds and what actions to take when those triggers happen. For instance, when you press the button for the horn, it will start playing. When you release the button for the horn, it will stop playing. There's also the sounds which describe exactly which wave files to play during each phase of, of the sound uh, at the start, in the middle, at the end, and uh, any other detailed information that the program needs in order to do that. Alright, so on to the fun part. I've got Jimry running here, Decoder Pro. So if we click on that, go to the debug, let's go ahead and open up a throttle first. We're going to need one. So we'll get our throttle going down here in the corner, give it an address. I can now control the locomotive on my layout. Uh, this also works with hardware throttles, uh, so if you have Digitrax, NCE, uh, any of those hooked up and your computer connected to your, your layout, uh, the hardware throttle will also cause the same effects to happen. So in Decoder Pro, if I click on the debug menu because this is still uh, still very, very uh, what the computer techies call alpha code, uh, very fragile, very uh, under development. We get this window here. This is the virtual sound decoder window. Uh, you have a config tab which allows you to choose, uh, eventually you'll be able to choose a locomotive directly from the roster and it will already know which file to load and which profile to use for that locomotive, set the address, you're good to go. That's not done yet. There's an options tab, so uh, a given profile might have two or three different horns to choose from, uh, maybe a couple of engine options, different types of bells. Uh, you might want to change some of the other options, and all of those will be available here on the options tab, and all of it driven from, from what the content creator puts into the, into the VSD file. Sounds tab is blank for the moment. This is going to get populated with buttons uh, based on what's in the VSD file. We'll see that shortly. Uh, and we'll come back to it. So let's go back to the config tab and we're going to load our VSD file. So click on file load and pick our VSD zip file from the uh, desktop, load it up. Now you can see the profile is active. So we're going to choose our profile. There may be multiple profiles in here. You could have uh, several different EMD locomotives all together. You could have different variants of the same locomotive. Uh, you could even have a generic thing where you just got a generic steam engine, a generic diesel engine, a generic electric engine, and, and you want to just be able to pick those and you dump them all into one VSD file. A lot of flexibility there, I hope. So we're going to set the address to match our throttle, 5278, 
And now our virtual decoder is listening to the throttle just like our locomotive decoder on the layout is. It's going to respond to all of the button presses uh, with a few differences. So right away, and I'll admit I have a bug in my uh, BSD file. I've got the, the horn and bell mapped to the wrong buttons. Uh, it's F3 on this panel. So if I push F3, you're going to hear the bell. And if I press F4, you're going to get the horn. Now, if I go back over here to the sounds panel, you're going to see we've got a whole bunch of buttons all of a sudden. We've got a bell button, a horn button, a coupler button, an air brake button, uh, and we have this engine start button. The slider here is not functional. You can't control your engine with this. What it does do is indicate which notch your diesel engine is in based on your throttle setting. Uh, just a little convenience item. The engine start button, however, does work. If you haven't started your engine yet, you're not going to get any sound out of it. So if I change my throttle setting, Nothing happens, except you can see the slider moves. Okay, that's on purpose. Up here, if I press the bell button, I get the bell. Press the horn, you get the horn. Uh, this is a convenience item. If you don't happen to have your layout connected to your computer, you can still click the buttons and get the sounds. Uh, if you're using DC or whatever, for whatever reason, uh, you don't want to use your throttle, uh, you can access these sounds directly. Uh, I find it also nice to have descriptive names on the buttons, so I don't have to remember what F8 is. Okay, so we press the engine start button. We're going to get a startup sound. We're going to have the en hear the engine at idle, and then we're going to see that when I change the throttle setting, the engine uh, engine sound follows it. Here we go. There we go. And now, if I change the throttle setting. I only have three sound samples from the MW2, so I only have three notches. So you all hear the sound change actually. Now, when I press the start button again, you notice when I do the window focus, it is selected. When I press the start button again, you're going to hear the engine shut down and the sounds will go away. So, here we go. As you can notice, on, just like on the real thing, I can still ring the bell. So, this is the basic idea how this works. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done, a lot of features to be added, and of course a lot of VSD files to be created uh, so that we've got sounds for a lot of different engines. Uh, you should be able to start multiple ones of these if you've got several engines running on the layout, different throttles assigned to them. Uh, you can have multiple virtual sound decoders all playing the sounds at the same time. So. That's the idea. I hope you like it. If you have suggestions, uh, you can find me on nscale.net. And as a final notice, uh, I hope you don't mind the uh, the watermark on this display. Uh, I'm using uh, ScreenFlow, and it's the demo version. It's a great program. I uh, just can't afford it right now. So thank you for listening.